Last week at the Arnold Sports Festival, I went for a workout with Amanda Bucci, her boyfriend Brian DaCosta, and my girlfriend Stephanie Buttermore. And even though there was an even representation of the sexes, we did more or less the same workout, with a few minor differences I'll highlight. And the significance of the term minor really can't be overstated since practical training differences between men and women come down to slight variations and tweaks to an already sound fundamental training philosophy embedded in basic human physiology, not necessarily predicated on sex differences. Earlier that week, a female grocery store cashier told me that she wanted to get more toned but not bulky and explained to me that more cardio must be the solution. I told her that lifting weights might be a better solution. A lot of folks still seem to be convinced that women who lift weights will end up looking thick, bulky, masculine, and so on. And while women certainly do have an impressive potential to build muscle, doing so generally results in that so-called toned look that most women are aiming for, not the monstrous physique that is usually only attainable with steroid use or an advanced and extremely rigorous training and nutrition plan specifically dedicated to attaining that more muscular look. One look through the girls who lift hashtag on Instagram will provide about 14 million counterexamples to this common misconception. But while it's untrue that women will look like the Hulk if they start lifting weights, it's also untrue that women have a poor potential to build muscle. While on average men can have 15 times more testosterone than women, their natural potentials to build muscle are actually quite similar. The answer to how similar will depend on who you ask. I spoke with scientific author Menno Henselmans about this, and he seems convinced that men and women have pretty much the exact same potential to build muscle. It's not that controversial actually, uh, because most research indicates that women and men actually have the exact same relative growth potential. And certainly there is some evidence to support this. A 2001 study looking at the differences between men and women in response to strength training found no difference in muscle gained after six months. And there's plenty other similar research to support this idea as well. However, conflicting literature suggests that men can build more muscle than women. For example, this paper found that in a six month strength training intervention, men gained about twice as much muscle as women. A summary that falls in line with scientific fitness author Lyle McDonald's suggestion that women can expect roughly half the muscle gain of men. In all, women certainly can can build an appreciable amount of muscle, likely falling somewhere between 50 to 100% of the hypertrophic potential of men. The main difference in the final result is due to the fact that women start out smaller. They genetically have less muscle and more body fat, but as far as we know, their propensity to build muscle is actually very similar to that of men. And although men tend to be stronger than women on an absolute basis, 97% of this difference is attributed to differences in muscle mass and nothing else. So if you have a man and a woman with the same muscle mass, there's a good chance they'll have the same strength. And this is a trend that follows through across many training variables. Usually the differences between men and women can be explained by differences in muscle mass and body fat, not sex per se. But for all that, there are still some things to highlight, the first being a difference in hormones. Because women can have about nine times more estrogen than men, it means they get to reap all the rewards of that hormone on not only metabolic health and glucose handling, but muscular repair and preventing catabolism. The main training implication here is that women are able to recover from more work, which means they can do more sets and reps per workout and more workouts per week. And since training volume, or the total sets and reps, has been very tightly correlated with increases in size and strength, it makes sense that, assuming all else equal, women should do more than men if they want to maximize the results. The second main difference relevant to training has to do with so-called fatigability. We still need more research to flesh out exactly why women don't fatigue as much as men, but it appears to be fairly complex with differences in the muscles themselves, hormones, the nervous system, and more. To highlight a couple key points, women have better blood flow and muscle perfusion, which means that fatigue-inducing metabolites can be cleared out of the muscle better in women. They also have a greater proportional area of the slow type 1 muscle fibers, which are better suited for endurance tasks. These factors, in concert with others, yields the net result that women are better at doing higher reps than men and that they can do more reps at a given intensity than men. Women can probably get away with shorter rest periods between sets than men for the same reasons. Of course, the flip side of this is that women are less suited for explosive training than men, which means that, assuming playing to your strengths makes sense, men can benefit from more explosive tempos with a more forceful positive, and women might do better with a slower tempo. Of course, it isn't smart to think in black and white terms, so I think it would still be smart for men to include some slow tempo or high rep work, and for some women to include some more explosive work in their routines. And finally, there is a pretty clearly documented difference in the upper and lower bodies of men and women. A 1993 paper reported women having about 50% of the strength of men in the upper body, but 66% of the strength for lower body. And this might explain why women tend to enjoy training legs more than men. They're better at it. 
So the main training differences between men and women stem from women having better recoverability and lower fatigability, with some upper to lower body discrepancies. With these nuances in mind, the majority of fundamental musculoskeletal physiology applies to both sexes, and ultimately the primary mechanism driving hypertrophy, namely mechanical tension, doesn't discriminate based on gender. What is going on everyone? Uh, first I just want to say thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you did like it. I put a lot of effort into this one, so please show me some support and hit the like button. I am back in Canada, but Stephanie's coming to visit me this weekend, so I'm really excited about that. I put the links to Stephanie's, Amanda's, and Brian's channels all in the description box below. My full interview with Menno Henselmans is going to go live very soon, uh, so you can check that out on my podcast, and just stay tuned to my social media channels for more info about that. Also, a lot of people will ask me how it is that I find all the information that I use in these videos, and one of my most trusted resources that I use all the time is examine.com. I recently did an interview for them on their monthly research review. They're running a 50% off sale starting today on their whole website. So I have an affiliate link where you can save some money, support me, and subscribe to the research review. You can check out that link in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.